सी शील जस्ट इक्व एंड टू सी स्कोप डॉट फाइल्स एंड देन वी विल एक्चुअली रन सी स्कोप विद द माइनस वी माइनस क्यू आर्ग्यूमेंट एंड दिस इज एक्चुअली द प्रीवियस स्टेटमेंट इंडेक्सेस द फाइल्स इन सी स्कोप डॉट फाइल विच इज स्निफर डॉट सी एंड ऑल्सो द यूजर इंक्लूड डायरेक्टरी सो actually all the files given inside that sniffer.c so what we do is we do a c scope minus d and tell it to go to the global definition of soc addr underscore ll as we can see that function is in user include linux if underscore packet dot h and here is the definition of soc addr underscore ll going back in order to be able to bind a raw socket to an interface what we need to tell the kernel is first of all the interface index now we know that the interface is eth0 but we need to find out the corresponding interface index which the kernel understands this interface index is nothing but a number which the kernel internally uses to identify the interfaces so for that we define a structure called if reek this is the ifreq structure or the interface request structure and this basically contains the interface name which is what we are going to fill up which is going to be eth0 and it contains a member called the ifr_if_index is nothing but the interface index so we want to know about the interface index of a particular interface so the way to do is is to make an iocetl call for the raw socket right and ask for the interface index so this is basically the input which we have to give to iocl so that it returns the interface index now as we can see that we are copying the device name which is eth0 into the ifr_name member right this is where we are copying it and of course this has a size of if nam sys right i f n a m s i z so you can search for it it should be defined here right and it actually maps to something else called if underscore name size anyway the point is that we need to copy the interface name eth0 into the ifr_name before making the iocetl call once we make the iocetl call by passing it this uh, interface request structure it is going to return to us with the interface index field filled in for that interface that is we would actually see that this member would be filled up by the kernel now once we know that we would bind to our socket now as we have seen in order to bind we are going to use the soc addr_ll structure set the family to af_packet now from the previous iocetl we would get the interface index this we are going to fill up in the sll.sll_if index and finally the protocol which we want to uh, sniff or send packets for that would be eth underscore p underscore ip which is coming in as input then we call bind for that raw socket and the soc addr structure uh, soc addr underscore ll structure cast as a soc addr structure right so the point of the bind raw socket to interface function is that given a particular device on a system right we just want to find out the packets which are being sent to that device let's say our ethernet card we are interested in finding out that the first ethernet card it is zero what packets it can see so we want to bind our raw socket to that ethernet card the way to do that is of course to use bind but now 
uh, the input to bind cannot be ETH0 it has to be the interface index for that we go ahead first and find the interface index right so first we get the interface index then we bind our socket to this interface this is the way we do it we'll get a hang of these things after a couple of programming examples now let's go down and see what happens packets to sniff is the arg v2 converted into an integer using a2i now basically we start decrements uh, decrementing packets to sniff uh, in a while loop and in that what we do is we call a receive from for that socket because raw sockets do not have any notion of a connection we use receive from which is the case uh, where we also use for udp inputs to receive from are going to be the raw socket and then the packet buffer which we had defined earlier in order to hold the packet which the kernel passes to us uh, the size is 2048 which is the size of packet buffer also we pass in the packet underscore info structure to the receive from call the kernel is going to fill up uh, some information about the packet in this structure we might also choose to use some of this information later now if there is an error right if receive from returns with a minus one there is an error and we basically throw the error to the user else we know that a packet has been received successfully in which case we go ahead and print the packet in hex now when a packet the receive from returns it contains the length of the packet so basically print packet in hex is pass the packet buffer and the length of the packet now we go ahead and have a look at print packet in hex this is a very simple function which takes in an unsigned character pointer and runs till the entire length of len and just prints the value of the corresponding byte in the packet in hex format right simple enough so just to recapitulate what we do is we create a socket first bind that socket to an interface decide on how many packets we want and then we start sniffing using receive from receive from is uh, the function which returns the real raw packet to us with all the headers and we go ahead and print that packet in hex so then we go ahead compile the program and then we run the program right let's say you want to give it two packets then you would see that it's going to sniff for two packets so as we can see the packet has been printed in hex but no useful information can yet be collected in the next video we will see as to how uh, this packet will be parsed this packet contains the ethernet frame ip frame maybe tcp or udp depending upon what the packet uh, is carrying and the data in the next video we will look at how to decode the ethernet frame from this packet dump thank you